There are 14 million people living in Los Angeles County. Nearly 3 million are uninsured, making access to top quality health care a challenge. Before Dr. Partikian, who you just saw in the video, arrived, the county hospitals of Los Angeles were without a full-time pediatric neurologist for over 15 years. Children experiencing seizures were treated in the emergency room and did not, and did not receive the subspecialty care that they so urgently needed. Since arriving in 2007, Dr. Partikian has been a busy man to say the very least. As you just saw in the video, he now has over a thousand families that rely on him. These families speak collectively over 10 languages and are largely economically and educationally undeserved. On a recent visit to Los Angeles County Hospital, Andrew and I saw Dr. Partikian caring for patients through the use of an interpreter. And he didn't leave the room until he was confident that the parents were informed of their child's prognosis and understood their options. And that is just huge. <laughs> the language barriers are nothing new to Dr. Partikian. As he arrived from Iran when he was eight years old with his family and he spoke no English. He moved to Los Angeles and grew up on our backyard before attending Washington University School of Medicine on a full tuition merit scholarship. He completed training in general pediatrics and pediatric neurology at the Children's Hospital Los Angeles. And in 2007, through a position created from the generous support of so many like a dinner like this in the past, Dr. Partikian joined the faculty at the USC Keck School of Medicine with a, full, with a dual appointment in pediatrics and neurology. He currently resides in Burbank with his wife, Talene, and their nine-month-old son, Alex. I've had the pleasure of getting to know Dr. Partikian these past couple of years, and he is more and more impressive every time that I meet him. If you told me that he could walk on water, I would believe you. Therefore, I would like Dr. Partikian to levitate <laughs> and come to the microphone, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Partikian. quite an introduction. I don't know if I deserve all of that because I do have a lot of colleagues, mentors, uh, senior professors at USC who've been an incredible inspiration, continue to be, and mentors at other academic facilities, UCLA, our neighbors. We're a tight-knit family. Um, as Mark was saying, for a number of years there was no child neurologist at Los Angeles County USC Medical Center. Um, during this time, kids were getting obviously suboptimal treatment going to various emergency departments, non-specialists, primary care physician groups, uh, or when they were admitted to the hospital with prolonged seizures. Um, a lot of children that I started to take care of, I noticed they were on obviously very older generation anticonvulsants. We've been quite successful in transitioning a lot of these kids to more appropriate newer medications that are better tolerated and have less intellectual and behavioral side effects. Um, and as Joshua, the boy in the video, um, demonstrated through surgical devices, non-pharmacological options, uh, we've been also able to impact their lives, their quality of life, make these kids more alert, really try to maximize their neurodevelopmental potential. Um, so either under the guidance of my colleagues at the USC Comprehensive Epilepsy Center, we are now working to more quickly identify pediatric patients who are surgical candidates, because that's the one mode of treatment currently that can really offer a cure. But it really takes multidisciplinary effort and um, a lot of institutional support, which we are getting now at USC. So I'm really honored to be here. Um, we have a lot of support. I have a very dedicated bilingual nurse who's here today, social workers who knows the ins and outs of the regional center and other public resources. So I am definitely not anywhere near a team of one, as you can imagine. Um, I'm on call 24 seven, so I think this is the only way to really ensure continuity of care for these patients. Because this is a very personal, very intimate, very unpredictable disease as 
um, Mark and Steve and others and Andrew have very eloquently described today. Um, we make a point to see kids who are having new onset seizures or high frequency of seizures within one to two weeks, but our general wait list has already grown to over three months. So there's a lot of room for expansion. There's a lot of room for improvement still. But I can honestly say if it wasn't for the Epilepsy Foundation and their friends, I wouldn't have been successful in staying at a county public institution such as USC, where our goal is in tune with that of the Epilepsy Foundation, namely to make sure that the standard of care is met for all children with epilepsy in our community, regardless of what language they speak, their background. So I really encourage you to think seriously about this. This is a very real disease and it impacts your friends and potentially family members and it's, it's something that we cope with daily. Um, I was joking to Mark after the video that I felt kind of like a movie star for the first time with a video camera crew and Camila and her husband were very nice but I would not want to trade in my day job for, <laughs> for any more uh, acting or being videotaping but this is something that I hope hits home um, and I think the personal depiction you see on the video on the video really captures what we're trying to deal with on a daily basis. Thank you so much. I'd like to present this plaque and name a three-year fellowship at UCLA, the Julie and Steve Dajardin Fellowship. Julie and Steve. This is quite an honor on behalf of children with epilepsy who don't necessarily have a voice in this cause. And so on behalf of children like Ari, Camille, Chloe, and hundreds of thousands of others, we thank you for your support on their behalf and providing these children a voice. Thank you.